I know what you're thinking. I wish I had a brand new episode of the Unknown Games podcast to listen to while I do the dishes. Or on my commute home. Or while I lay in bed. Or while I lay in bed. Well, don't worry, we got you covered because we'll talk about how much food is too much food, is Google Stadia worth your time and effort, and what's it like to live in Japan but not actually have a honko. All that and more in this week's episode starting right now. Welcome to episode number 11 of the Unknown Games Podcast. It's good to be back. Uh, I did leave for a little bit. I'm your host, Adrian. Uh, welcome, as I said before, this is a show about Japanese games, games of all sorts, actually. A little bit of Japanese life here and there, and the occasional McDonald's, because we love to eat. And who is we? We is uh, myself and uh, my co-host, hey, Alex. It's- What's up? It's me. I'm Alex. I'm back. Oh, I was. I I didn't leave last week. I took over as host, and uh, right. I'm been, yeah. I've been demoted. You've been. I mean, it's not a demotion. I mean, we're technically on same equal status. You know, this is an equal employer operation here. <laughs> did you listen to last week's episode? <laughs> I did listen to last week's episode. It was a really good, uh, really great episode. It's super shout out thanks to uh, the Raywa podcast. Uh, for our guest. Yeah. 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 Thanks to Nick. Um, I've known Nick for a lot of years and we were, we were talking about making a podcast for so long and then we just never did it. And then he moved. So he used to live in Tokyo and we're like, yeah, let's do a podcast. Let's do a podcast. And then he moved and then we're like, oh, well shit, I guess we're not doing that anymore. Um, so we just started our own separate podcasts. Yeah. I like how you guys were talking about it. And then at the, at one point it's just like, yeah, you know, we, uh, we were thinking about doing it and then we both started our own podcast and now we're actually collaborating on this podcast. So it's like a dream come true. Yeah. It's Just... funny. Cause like, <laughs> um, you know, despite the fact that he moved that, that doesn't need to, that doesn't mean we can't do a podcast together. So we still could have done a podcast together Yeah, and, and we never did. Um, so in an alternate universe, I'm recording, uh, not this essentially. Yeah. You're recording the alternate universe version of the podcast that would be yeah oh well whatever um <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that's a weird way to start this episode the podcast that would be that is actually a pretty cool name for a podcast you should get it on would, it there you go yeah so that's the, that's the third that's the you, third podcast there you go you and nick should get on that uh but no no i mean it's i'm uh still away technically from the land of japan i'm mm-hmm. in the land of the u.s where everything is big i've noticed that I've yeah ate... god bless america am i right there you go man i've been eating so much it's been a wonderful time here i'm going to be here for a couple more weeks but uh yeah hopefully audio and everything sounds pretty good we'll keep the standards for you you everyone peoples you so everyone I know, peoples yeah <laughs> um i i i know um what's the word uh Every time that I go home or any of like my friends here that live in Japan go home, yeah. um, we eat. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter, um, you know, who you are. When you go home to your home country, uh, everyone that I know, they just eat like, oh, Jesus, I eat so much cheese. Or, like, oh, I eat so much meat. Or it's like, oh, I go to every burger chain or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've just been eating a bunch of food. I know like. So I flew into like uh, San Antonio and my friend picked me up and we just went straight to uh, get like Tex-Mex. So I had mm-hmm. this huge burrito and oh my word, it was, it was amazing. Like Yeah. So I, I've only been to Texas once in my life, but you know, they, I mean, they're not really kidding when they say that everything there is big. Every, uh, everything yeah. is big. Yeah. It's like a weird, I mean, I'm not Texan and I don't really know anyone from, from Texas personally, but I just have a feeling that they... Um, kind of pride themselves on they do <laughs> on, yeah they're like we have the biggest state we have the biggest food you know like everything here is big we got our big texan hat like i don't know so dude it was it was it was crazy i mean just um there's one of the best barbecue places in like america 
I didn't yeah. know it was going to be in like uh, I think it's in Austin, but yeah, we we woke up at six a.m. drove over there. It's called Franklin's, mm-hmm. and has like some of the best brisket, beef ribs, you know, pork ribs, uh, out there. And literally, the line was like wrapped around this place. It used to just be like a food stand. And then the, it just got so popular because it was it so got good. so pop. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was insane. We waited for about f- almost three, four hours and ordered about like literally six, six, almost eight pounds of meat. That sounds um, that sounds really good. So, you yeah. know, ha- eating, eating that um, and experiencing that uh, plus knowing what you know or, you know, you've lived in Japan for a couple years at this point. Yeah. Um, is that food good enough for you to, to be like, oh, I'm going back to America? I mean, <laughs> it's like make the journey back, you yeah. know, just like, like live, like, in yeah, yeah. To, to live, to live, live, to be like, I give up my life in Japan. Um, you know, it was fun Japan, but you got no brisket. So, but you got no brisket, dude, yeah. that brisket is good. Them ribs, man. I mean, it, it, it was almost like that for a second. I mean, just the, the, like the Tex-Mex, everything was authentic. I think that was the thing. Like when we have Mexican um, or, you know, Hispanic dishes in Japan, it's just bad, like, bad, bad. Yeah, they're bad. I, <laughs> they're I, bad. I, I, like, like someone dropped some fireball. Like, I don't like, what is they're, this? Yeah, what are you yeah. doing to me? And that's, that's the biggest thing about foreigners in Japan. Everyone that I know is just like, where can I get good Mexican? Like, we're always on the hunt for good Mexican here. Like Taco Bell. Like, okay, so I will say though, when I went to Taco Bell, yo, J- Japan Taco Bell, I gotta give it to you for keeping yeah, it classy, keeping it good. classy and and keeping it good. Um, but the drink sizes, oh lord, <laughs> uh, everything's bigger in America. But yeah, would it oh, convince yeah, yeah. me to like move back? I don't think it would convince me just because like my diet has changed and I'm so used to, um, rice just. Yeah, the good old rice. the good old kome, the good old kome, that great right. rice, and the the portion sizes. I'm just used to it, and I'm I know, used to yeah. to walking. The I don't know, it's just so convenient. Um, but it's it's hard not to say I don't want to come mm-hmm. here for like a month and do this again. Yeah, every um, every like at least a year, every year to stay for a month and eat. You know, I um that definitely ran through my mind as well. Um. I also went back home uh, earlier this year. I I'm, I wasn't there for quite as long as you have or will be, but um, no, I was working uh, my normal job, and I just like, you know, no one. I was I still went to meetings and stuff. It was pretty kind of weird, but right, I, right. Um, you know, I could do it. We could do it. Um, so I could just go home and be like, "Peace out, dudes." Um, you're not gonna see me, but I'll still be like working. So don't worry about it. It's like yeah, yeah. The work is covered. The food is also on my end covered. Everything that's good about, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But just, I'm in the back of my mind, I'm just like, I don't want to get fat because everything is so much bigger back home. I've started um, exercising, stretching, and, and like, I like I don't exercise in Japan, but now I've just like, oh. Uh, you started I need doing to, it? I need to, yeah. I get up early in the morning. I'm like, yep, time to do some stretches and exercise. Keep it down. There's a story that I like to tell about people about like when I have reverse culture shock. So when I went back home once um, after, you know, going to university in Japan and going back home to, to do my final year. Yeah. Uh, I went to a Wendy's and I was just like, yeah, I'll have like, you know, this combo and I'll have a medium drink. My my drink comes out, like my order comes out. And yeah. I was like, um, I was like, excuse me, I asked for a medium, uh, you know, not, not, like not a large, a not large. <laughs> and then she was like, you know, that's a medium. And I was like. Oh my god. No, it's it's a large. Oh no, like, yeah. <laughs> like seriously, the um I I don't remember which one it was. I think it was Taco Bell. The like normal combo set, like the drink that comes with that was just so like, big. It's a half liter or something. I'm sitting mm-hmm. here like, um mm-hmm. This is this is good, no. But I don't think I can dr- finish drinking it completely. Yeah, it it's nuts. It's just like that to me was reverse, like reverse culture shock, like going back home. And I was like, oh my God, was it always like this? Was it really? It's like- always, yeah, that, that's the thing. It's, it was always like that. It's always, <laughs> it's always been like that and will always be like this. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Anyways, that's a good yeah. uh, intro. So it's great that you're home. It's good that you're, um, I guess, enjoying life. 
So you yeah, haven't been playing some, anything, obviously. I yeah, I haven't really been playing much. I so out in Texas, I was watching a lot of Twitch, which I don't usually do. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember what the streamer's name is completely. It's like, uh, ah, crap, Coraj. Courage? Okay. No, that's not. No, not that guy. That's the guy who went to YouTube. Sorry, his name is like Co something. I need to get his name because I enjoyed his stream. He's a he's a he's a dad and um, dude had like twenty seven k concurrent. You know, viewers. Viewers. Yeah. Um, he was playing Fallen Order, so I watched probably a good half of Fallen Order being played. I know you guys talked about it last week, mm-hmm. uh, but it it's it it was it was fun. I mean, it was fun to watch. Uh, it did make me want to play the game. The game does look a little, there's some like issues that I have in terms of just, um, uh, I forgot the guys, is his name Cal? His name is Cal, right? The main character? The main character? I'm not 100% sure, but that seems um, possible, yeah. The main character's fish eyes and a uh, weird running style is just always, he, he, he's just such an awkward character. Um, there's another character in the game, um, if you've played it. I believe she is a former Jedi who is, or who like was part of the Empire. I guess she went Sith for a while, uh-huh. and like then decided this isn't for me. And like she's like she used to be a sister. That sounds so messed up because she's black. Like, but she used je- to be a, <laughs> a <the> Jedi sister. <laughs> sister? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, okay. So like th- these are the people that um, he's having to fight, and you know she's the traitor of the group. And so we're just wondering. This dude is a paladin, uh, um, not paladin, but he's a um, Padawan. Padawan, yeah, yeah. He's never finished his training, and he's, he's like so li- badass. Yeah, he's well, no, he's not even badass at first. He's just getting like basic powers, and he's remembering his training as he goes through. And we're just like, "Yo, homegirl, former Jedi, why don't you teach him?" Yeah, um, mm-hmm. the, the Star Wars universe <laughs> is, is um, really complex, but I always have this question where it's like, so this this takes place. I believe I'm not a Star Wars fan. I would say so. I could be very wrong. Uh, yeah. I believe this takes place right after Order sixty six is engaged, right? Right, right, right. So Order sixty six is when the it's like that that back door that that tells clone troopers to kill all the Jedi's. Take them um, out. Yeah. So I think that's between episodes three and four. Yeah. I, so, so that would be yeah Order sixty six cool to yeah. And um, so this nope. this guy. This Padawan is a survivor of of that, right? He's basically one of the last remaining Jedi. The the, you know, the Padawans, right? Right, right. Um, I haven't played the game, but I assume I assume by the end of the game, you you become a fairly powerful in your own right, and you can become you are a capable fighter, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, you know, I know this is this is the newest piece of Star Wars media, but that leaves a question: like in in episodes four, five, and six, where homie, where where, is where, he? where did he go? Right. Oh, so th- yeah. <laughs> like the only way for you know EA basically to patch that question from from being a problem is that at the end of Fallen Order yeah, he, he just he, he dies. dies he dies yeah, yeah. any that's any, the any o- sequels only way. they have he's, he's he's going to die like that's yeah and and so like my friend was also saying like well you know this would be a whole lot better if we knew that at the end of the day homeboy was going to be still alive or you know. Yeah, we kind of know the ending in a way. It's kind of like in Halo Reach. Um, we know that everyone dies, right? Right. Because Master Chief, you know, starting out, he's like, "I'm the last Spartan." I'm like, obviously, you know, Halo Reach has a cast of Spartans, so they're not, and none of them are none of them are Master Chief. So, uh, so it's like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we know the outcome. But but other than that, like the combat, everything was. I, I enjoyed, like I said, I enjoyed looking at the game. And uh, I can definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking to get into a just a fun casual action adventure game. Um, mm-hmm. The guy was he was playing it on the hardest difficulty, and I don't think that it's completely balanced in some places. The enemy placement is a little like dodgy at times. Like literally, it's just like, hey, I walked through a door, and there's someone literally next to you that you can't see, cheap shotting you. So uh, just be prepared for some moments like that. But the force powers get to be pretty cool. Um, like Nick said, you can customize your lightsaber. Though it doesn't do anything stat-wise, it's just, you know, for aesthetics. Yeah, um, and that's still fine. I'm totally cool with that. Because I'm a fan of looking good, you know what I mean? Like, enjoying how I look. How you look, yeah. So, and, I, yeah, I mean, I was playing Pokemon recently, and you can customize your character a little bit. You can buy clothes and change your hairstyle and stuff. And Dude. this is Pokemon. It's so like non-important, but I spent a good chunk of time just like just like a hairstyle, customizing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, are you are you still playing Pokemon? Like uh, I can't imagine you're not. I can't imagine you've just like blown through it. No, I, I, the answer is yes and no. Um, okay. So so, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this last week, but but like Death Stranding and Pokemon came out really close together, and then uh, like a week before Death Stranding was Persona Five. Yeah. And you know, I don't have all the time in the world. I still have like a full time job, and then when I get home, sometimes I don't always play games. So, I've been trying to go and. I've been trying to play all those games, so I haven't touched Pokemon since like last week, maybe like last Friday. Okay. So I I played Pokemon for a day or two, then I played Death Stranding for a day or two, and then I actually didn't play video games like for the last four days. And yesterday I just went hard on uh, Persona and Apex. I played a solid like twelve hours of Apex yesterday. Was there a all right, all right, here we go, everybody. This is the Apex part of the podcast. You know, I can't resist. <laughs> How was that Apex, and why did you play 12 hours of it? Uh, it was good. Um, yeah, we got a couple wins. Why did we, to- why did we play 12 hours? It's cause, so I played with my friend. My friend lives uh, back home. Okay. Um, so he's in a different time zone. So we often really don't get to play together. Okay. But it was like the weekend. It was like Friday night for him, and then Saturday afternoon for me. So he stood up really late. So I played up until like 6 p.m. for me. He, he went to bed at like 2 a.m. Okay. And then he doesn't sleep very much for some reason. So he woke up uh, like five hours later. And then at that time, it was still only like maybe 10 for me or like 9 or 10. And then he's like, oh, let's play. I'm like, all right, fine. So then I stayed up until like 3 a.m. <laughs> welcome and, to uh, my welcome to my almost weekly grind. I, yeah. I have that like... um. So I played with a couple of people, uh, my friend in Japan and then my friend over in um, in California. So we usually have to sync up at, you know, Saturday night uh, in Japan. And then also, you know, before that, we're playing in the day sometimes. So it's just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's fun, though. I mean, do you, do you have any stories? Do you have any? Yeah, I just have one. It's just, it was kind of funny. Um, I clipped it, so I saved it on my hard drive. But we okay. landed... Um, I honestly can't remember where we landed. It wasn't it wasn't thermal. I feel like it was like where was it? Like the bottom left corner of the map, like lava, not lava city, but the other lava. Oh, dome. Yeah, some around there. Okay. And it was kind of hot, and by kind of I mean it was like four or five teams, so fairly hot. Um. So there was a scramble for guns, obviously. Yeah. Um, punching and scrambles. I didn't get a gun at first, so I was doing the punching thing. I got down, which is fine, because um, my friend got me back up when he, when he saved me essentially. So I got up, looted the uh, the death box, and I got like just an alternator. That was pretty much it, right? Right. And by this time, like all, all the teams had left. They either left or they died. Uh, so we were we were survivors, which is great. And so we're like, I'm still looting, trying to pick up some some stuff. And I noticed, I had to do a double take, but there was, like, kind of blending in with the background. Yeah. There, there was a caustic just crouching, just <laughs> sitting there, not moving, just this, this caustic was crouching. I had to do a double take. I, like, looked back. I was like, wait, what? Like, no no team. It was just a caustic, just a solo one dude. Did, and, he didn't and, even have, like, his gas trap out? Was He, just he like, had nothing. He okay. had nothing. He was, he was just, just sitting there. there. And then <laughs> I like did a double take. I look, I like, I feel like I locked eyes with him. And then I just blasted him with the alternator. <laughs> and then he died. It was so funny. Oh man, you gotta, you, okay, you gotta, you gotta have that clip. And then we gotta put that on the, on our Twitter. Cause that's, that, that is, that is worthy. That is worthy. Yeah. I mean, like, I've then, had that moment. Yeah. Um, in a game where, um, I was like on the older, on the, the, the first map on Kings Canyon. And like I went to market and I did not know on the outside of market there was a part that you could hide. This octane was so hidden. I walked by and nothing. I've never seen that little little hiding spot. And he just lit the entire team up. I was like, oh, dude. Man. But anyways, continue. Continue. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. And I because I was with my friend and I was like, I I think what happened was he landed with my friend, but my friend like looted everything before he could even get anything. Okay. And then it was too risky for him to like leave or like run away. Ooh. So he just tried to hide. He tried I mean, I think he was waiting for us to go. Um and he uh, almost like we almost, he almost did. Did. Like, I, I, yeah, I almost, almost didn't see him. <laughs> yeah, almost did. And I had to do like a double take. I was like, "Wait, is that a 
caustic i was like wait what <laughs> like hey caustic um i see you i see i see you um yeah. yeah it was so funny um anyway so that was it so out of out of all the hours i played that was we that was the highlight i think we won okay. a couple of times but like that's like i don't you know that's part of the game sometimes you win sometimes you lose so whatever as long as you get a couple you know a couple wins get that good feeling and then move on you know yeah. it's been a successful day of apex yeah um yeah but i mean winning is just part of playing apex so uh for me i i really enjoy these weird weird moments that you get sometimes those standoff moments when you said winning is a part of apex for me i'm like dang alex go ahead get that streamer money get the, get the uh yeah we had a couple of really good wins um for some reason we had a lot of drops i don't know why but um so it was me and my friend and a rando right okay okay a lot of a lot of times yesterday for some reason the rando would drop like not quit like dc drop oh i guess it Maybe there's some like new server issues that are up, but yeah, I don't know. Like they would just be running, and then they would just be like moonwalking, and then they would just disappear. Oh, that that's usually me sometimes. On yeah, my I, I, it happened connection. a bunch of times. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah. Other than that, so you're playing. Uh, you played that. You played Pokemon, and then you're still playing Death Stranding ish, kind of. Like how, how um, are you feeling with Death Stranding in the mix? Um, in terms of ranking, I guess is it. I, I it's honestly for me. Continue? No, I mean, I will continue it, but I'm not going to play it. I, I don't have an urgency to play it, to be honest. Okay. Um, okay. For me, for me, it's Pokemon, or sorry, it's Persona, number one. Um, and then number two is Pokemon, because I know that I can get through Pokemon fairly quickly. Like, the story apparently is only like 25 hours. Okay, that's not too bad. So I'm going to do Persona, Pokemon, and Death Stranding, just when I'm not playing Persona, or anything else for that matter. Okay. Because, um, yeah, there's nothing else coming out this year, right? In December, yeah, I don't believe yeah, so. There is one game, I think, I can't remember, is there, is this like an Assassin's Creed or something, but it doesn't, actually, I don't remember, there is one kind of semi-game that's coming out, but it doesn't really factor into something that we would be playing, so, yeah, you're clear. Continue. Yeah, up until January, I think January 20th, when we have to play Kondagawa Jet Girls. Do you, I mean, you can get your Kondagawa on with, uh, you know, the anime, for, I'm, you know? I I'm not kidding. Um, I'm probably gonna You're buy gonna it. You're gonna play it. Yeah, I'm gonna buy it. I'll I'll, I'll buy it, and I'll, I'll I'll stream it or something. Just because it it just seems like a game that's, that's streamable. It, yeah, and it's so silly. Right? It it doesn't take itself seriously. Like it's not trying to sell itself as like I'm a very serious racing game. You know what I mean? It's oh, really we, we, I know. yeah. It's so forward with its fan service and how how stupid it is that it's just a fun game. I think to check out. So I'll. I'll Maybe yeah, I'll get it. Maybe I'll stream it. Um, we'll talk about it. That's something. To I'm just like to. I'm just like imagining in my head like Kondagawa Jet Girls. That conversation, like I can't I can't tell if I should also purchase it or not. I hope there's a demo. Please let there be a demo. You should just... you should get it, and then we can um we we can play it multiplayer. We should. Is there is there it. a tag yeah. team? Oh, I wonder if it's gonna be like a tag team because it's like maybe teams maybe of, yeah because it's two, two right two. like it's, it's two, two yeah. yeah yeah two girls on one jet bike. Yeah, two girls, one jet bike, right? That's... Oh my god, that that just sounds. <laughs> yeah, two girls, one bike, huh? Yeah. Someone's like, someone's thinking of like these these guys. That's the name of that's to. the name of this week's episode. That's the name of this week's episode. Two two girls, one bike. Kanagawa jet girls. How did you just get into the conversation? You snuck in here. Yeah, I, well, it's I... me looking forward to games to play. Oh my word! Well, that's uh, yeah. We're gonna keep this show. This week's show is gonna be a little bit short. We're a little bit pressed on the time, but uh, we will be back. We're gonna take a short break. Listen to the sponsorship. We, we love, um, you know, we love our sponsor. We love our aunt. Yeah, we love our sponsor. So who yeah. is it? You'll have to find out after the break. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hi everyone. Yo, it's me, Adrian, and I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Anchor, for being not only our sponsor, but also for being our host. Now, Anchor is an amazing way to record and publish, distribute your podcast. Seriously, everyone, we were looking through so many different options, but Anchor has been such a wonderful place and a home for us. Number one, it's free. Uh, it's free. Yeah, it's free. I said that three times because that was home for us. And also, you don't have to worry about uploading only a certain amount per month or getting rid of episodes. Free unlimited storage. So that is huge point for us. 
And we also want to say that Anchor allows you to edit and upload your podcast, even record your podcast, not just from your computer, but also from your mobile device. That's right. I'm recording this from my mobile. Yeah, see, I sound just as good as on the PC. And that's really cool. You can do it anytime with friends and just be as creative as you want. And number three, I think this is one of the best points, period, is that Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. That's right. We don't know how on earth to get on any of the platforms that we need to, iTunes, Google Play Store for podcasts, but Anchor does. And you don't even have to do anything. They do it for you. So I'm just like, what? And it's on Spotify? My friends use Spotify. I use Spotify. Oh, hey, just share via Spotify. There are so many cool things that you can do and, of course, make money from your podcast without any minimal listenership. So this is really cool. I love Anchor because of these reasons. I love Anchor. That sounds like crazy. I'm advertising. But that's really cool. You know, I had to say thank you to Anchor just for that. And we hope you enjoy the podcast. Now, remember that you, if you want to download the app, we encourage you to. We also in download, encourage you to go to uh, anchor.fm and try, try it out. Get your own podcast. It's really easy to get started. All you need is your phone. I don't even have to tell you to get a mic, just your phone, because it has a mic. See, that's amazing right there. So it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Thank you for listening, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the show. All right, and welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful sponsorship from Anchor. Uh, I, or just you liked my voice, one of the two, um, or both. I hope yeah, you enjoyed or both. both. Yeah, <laughs> or both. We're back here with the news. Uh, there wasn't a lot of things completely this week. I know that you know last week they uh, Alex and Nick talked about the Half Life story, of course Half Life Alex, which was which is you know mm -hmm. that was yeah. awesome. Well, there's been a lot. There's been newer information that came out about it since the last time. Well, last episode. Um, so it's coming out in March, I believe. Right, March. And um, you can pre-order it now. It's on Steam, so just open up Steam and and pre-order it. It's like uh, it takes place between episodes one and two. Right, so it's so a it's mid, like... it's a midquel, yeah. So no three here. No three. It's it's not it's... even three under a different name. It's just it's like yeah, it's a midquel. There was a trailer as well. I don't know. It if looks guys... pretty good. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty, pretty good. good. Like I, I like honestly, I love how they've updated. Uh, the look of the source engine, and maybe it's still the source engine of some sort. I'm not sure, but it still has that, you know, that Half Life style to it. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And it, it looks like it's going to be a pretty cool adventure in VR. Uh, it's available for all VR sets. Yes, and... they index the Vive the Rift and even Windows Mixed Reality. So it doesn't matter what you have, uh, as mm -hmm. long as you don't have the Oculus Quest. Uh, but even if you do have the Quest, you can use uh, the link or whatever it is, and you can play it. You can play it. Which is, I, I mean, I, I think Valve is, they've been really good on VR and trying to push the VR technology. So, like, I, honestly, I think this could be, I, I hope it's going to be a showpiece game for VR along, you know, up there with Super Hot and other, the other, yeah, you know, I Beat really Saber and things like that. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I think this is, I mean, at least I hope so. I hope that this is going to be the game that you're like, oh, do you have a VR headset? No, well, you should get one because, you know, this, because of this. Right. Um, because the trailer looks really good. Really good. Really good. I'm yeah. like even just like just atmospherically it I think yeah, that it they looks, nailed it. it they looks, did, they did. So I, I don't know. I know that, you know, Alex she has it's not a gravity gun, but it's based off of the gravity gun. Her hands like her gloves that she has, so it's like gravity gravity hands, I don't know. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. just a lot of fun things that you'll be able to do. Uh, maybe I know a long time ago there was that whole thing about Valve working on like sign language for Half Life Three. I don't know, but hey, you can you know move your fingers on that index. Right. If you have the Knuckles controls, they're not called the Knuckles anymore. That was a prototype name, but whatever the uh, index controllers are, as yeah. long as you have those, you can you have a better um, well finger tracking essentially, so for a better VR experience, which is which is crazy. I think that. It's like what out of the box a thousand bucks for index and all um, the controllers bells and whistles. Yeah, it is. It is up there. So recent, like not recently, sorry, a couple of days ago, they announced that the Valve Index is now available in Japan and Canada. 
which affects me, obviously, uh, living in Japan. So now I can finally get my hands on the index, um, either the headset or the controllers or whatever, whatever. So I already have a Vive, so I could kind of do a half upgrade where I can just get the headset or I can just get the controllers or something like that. Right. Um, so I'm looking at the order page right now. Uh, if you want to get the full set, so that's headset controllers, base stations, and half of Alex. Uh, it's, well, I'm looking at it in Canadian, but it's 1,319 mm. Canadian dollars. That's CAD. That you, that, yeah, that, so that, that, that that's like a 1,000 USD, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's about it's roughly about a thousand. Yeah, um, and I already have a vibe, right? So I for sure want those controllers because I gotta have that that finger tracking. You gotta get them knuckles. So just here, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. So Alex just doing math. <laughs> just the knuckles and just Half Life Alex is three hundred and sixty nine Canadian Jeez. dollars. Jeez, those are want... just. Those are just controllers, my friend. Those are just controllers. Just controllers, and you can buy like a Switch or any of you can, the current yeah. consoles, pretty much. Like, yeah, yeah. Here's it's, let's say, oh, I don't need those controllers. I want the headset. I want the increased resolution. I want the better visual experience. Just right. the headset and half like Alex, six hundred fifty nine Canadian dollars. You know, dreams come true. That's so much <laughs> money. <laughs> Hey, if you you know you've got a nice job, or you're just you know one of the people who can sacrifice two or three paychecks, or one paycheck, I don't know. However it goes, it's it's fine, you know. Yeah. That's... So I bought my Vive uh, at full price, which is pretty close to a thousand dollars at that time when I when I bought it. It was close to a thousand when I bought it. Um, right. So I, I actually had a, a bonus from my from my previous job. Um, I got a I got a Christmas bonus, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna blow it. I'm gonna blow this on a Vive. Dude, and I did. When... Those bonuses, see, that's that's yeah. what you strive for. When you get older, kids, or if you're already older and you're listening to us, uh, wait, maybe you already have a bonus. I hope you have a bonus. If you do, yeah, blow it, blow it on the blow index, it. Yeah. blow it, buy yourself an index, get yourself some yeah. knuckles. Yeah, I really uh, want to throw a Sonic joke in here somehow, but I just, I just can't. Yeah, you try, but you can't. It's like so the Shenmue thing, Three. The thing. Are you calling Shenmue Three a joker? <laughs> <laughs> savage. I'll let everyone else be the uh, the judge yeah. of that. <laughs> um, the thing about VR is, I feel like there are two different um, tiers of it in a sense. We have the index tier, which is a thousand plus, right? Right. And that's uh, what I would say is like the full, the full experience. You have um, the headset and the the super advanced controllers and the and the base stations. Um, that's a thousand plus. And then you have the other tier, which is like the PSVR or the Oculus Quest, which is significantly cheaper. Right. Um, not as accurate, uh, obviously you don't get finger tracking or anything like that. And that's out, well, at least for the Quest, that's, that's inside out tracking using cameras and not, um, IR sensors. Right. Right. But, but it's way, way cheaper. Um, so that's an easier sell. So it's, it's tough. I think, um, like when you are a developer and you're like, I have a vision for VR. I want to make something like Half-Life Alex. I, I believe you want to do the thing where you're like, oh, let's do balls to the wall. It's 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 index let's, time, let's right? Let's go all the way. But then, you know, because it's not a unified development, yeah. you know, like you can't just make one and it goes for all of them. You have to make adjustments for each of them accordingly. You know, it's they're not even all the same specs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it looks like this on an index, which is super high resolution, but it looks like this on a base Vive from like four years ago. Right, right. So, um... But hey, it, you know... I, yeah, uh, I, I think it's similar, not quite, but maybe similar to people who make cell phone games because there's so many different screen sizes, so many different specs, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and like, I, like for me, I've always used Androids, but I've never used the top of the line Android phone. Um... And which it gets really annoying when, you know, there's a new game that comes out and I can tell it's optimized, obviously, for like iOS, you know, for an Apple platform, because I'll see the same game running and it's just like it moves so smooth. And unless I have, you, you know, a, a really good Android phone, and I think on Apple, on you know, on I, iPhones, you get a good quality performance across all of the different, you know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, surprisingly. So, so good job um, to Apple for that. But for Android, like, no. 
<laughs> you think you have something good, but the developers are like, we weren't targeting you. We're yeah. Targeting the, someone else here. Yeah, I know. You know, people who own like the the Samsung uh, S9 or the, the Google Pixel 3 or, you know, one of the top, the higher end Android phones. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, I, I, one thing that we didn't even mention is that the dead tier of VR, aka phone VR. Oh yeah, yeah, you know the Google Daydream or whatever, right? Yeah, <laughs> they, it's it's actually like done now. Like they officially announced that Google Daydream, they're no longer. I think they'll still be supporting it, but they're not doing any significant pushes for it anymore in the future. Yeah. In, in fact, they're doubling down more so on cardboard. That's the thing that freaks me out about. Google Stadia um, that we could talk about that for a little bit, but that launched uh, last they week. They did, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people are just like, "What happens when Google kills it?" It's um, to a lot of people in their mind, in their minds, it's not even a question of if Google will kill it; it's, it's when Google like will when. kill it. Because yeah. like when we look at a lot of Google products or their suites, uh, suite of apps, like they regularly change every three four, five years, somewhere around there. And by change, I mean they die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or right. they just change the name of them and add them or consolidate them, you know. Um, yeah, Google, it's Stadia, I've, I've seen the reviews and it's it's mixed. I, I mean, if you have the internet connection, is, is what it seems like it boils down to is like, if you have the internet connection to run it at full speed, it's great, you know. Um, there are some like issues with the... UI or not UI, but you know, just like overall user experience with it. But when it works, it works. But I don't know. It seems like more or less of the times it's like somewhat working. Is that what like you got the feeling of too? Reading around? Yeah. So I saw a video of a guy. I can't. I think it was maybe. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say in, in gadget, but it was a, a, book, a publication where they hit the space bar, and then like half a second later, the guy would jump in Destiny Two. And oh man. That's not playable. Absolutely, that's not playable. That's not playable. That's especially beyond yeah. impact. And that's <laughs> yeah. You it's, can't play anything. Uh, especially in um. In in a game like, like Destiny Two, yeah, you you can't do that. Like the the delay is too bad. So it one hundred percent depends on the quality of your internet connection. And, completely. You know, if you have a great connection, you have a super strong up and down. Probably, probably the lag isn't too, too bad. You might notice it with Destiny. It's like a high a game like that, essentially, right? Like I wouldn't right. do comp like, you know, CSGO competitive with that. But um, Assassin's Creed, probably, probably a okay. I don't know, yeah. FF15, probably, probably very, very fun. Um, so it depends on your interconnection. If it's not that strong, um, I would say maybe don't do it. Just get a console. You're going to have a Just better time. Yeah, just just get a console. And I mean, like the thing is, is I think Stadia does. Is does Stadia do 4K? I believe they mean? said that they could. Um, they theoretically, could? Okay. yes. Yeah, theoretically, okay. yes. They're gonna they're gonna go until they hit 4K, and then it's just gonna be done. That's just it. Like, okay, we we did it. Uh, hopefully, base you know base performance is is good, but we just really wanted to do 4K. Uh, but I I don't know. It's it's gonna be interesting to see how it shapes up in the future, especially with the newer consoles coming in. Uh, I think a lot of people have definitely given Stadia uh, the attention that it deserves just because, you know, Google's a major player uh, in any market when they step in. Uh, so it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, right. And when it comes to the internet, you know, Google is, I mean... The internet. In, yeah, in many people's <laughs> minds, Google is the internet company. So if anyone has the infrastructure to pull this kind of thing off, it's got to be, it's got to be like a Google, right? Yeah, it's got to be Skynet. Yeah, yeah, it's got, yeah, it's got, it's got it. Yeah, exactly. And then one of these days, it'll be like, I want to play F15, and then they'll be like, No, you don't. No, you don't. And you're yeah. like, Oh, well, I'll just pirate it. And then it's like, Really? No, you don't. Knock on the door. Oh, man, yeah, it's done. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's Stadia. Uh, I I believe I you know I don't know if Stadia is gonna come to Japan, um, but if, even if it does, I personally am not interested in in Stadia. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Google just, Google has a presence in Japan. I want them to do Google Fiber in Japan. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the thing about Stadia to me, which is weird, is like the market, you know, they're, these are hardcore games. These are not casual games. These are, you right. know, legit games. Who is Stadia 
before, if you're already that kind of gamer, wouldn't you want to just buy a console? <laughs> you know, buy the games? Um, it's kind of, saying it's kind of weird because the sense that it, all of the games that they have on there, I mean, like who doesn't have any of these games currently? You know, who wants them, right? It's, it's more like Stadia is a luxury. I think that's the best way of thinking of it. It's a luxury. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know who it ex it's exactly for. It's for people who want to try out new technology, who want to see, um, because I mean, like it, they have like the founders package and people, when they put like, oh, here's a founders package, it just makes it seem like it's even more prestigious than it is as a service. But I, I don't know. I, it has to be for people who just want to try out that new technology. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is a very small percentage of people who yeah. will stick with it after trying it, even after that, you know what I mean? So Yeah, it's not for me, for sure. It doesn't have games that I want to play. And even if it was just like, oh, you want to play, for example, like Google Stadia was like, oh, Conor with Jack Rose, you know, day and date with the PS4. Even like, so, I have a PS4. Be, yeah, I'm like, I have a PS4. I'm not going to sign up for a, a subscription service. Um, I, I'm just, you know, or... Or half like Alex on Google Stadia. I'm like, well, I have a PC. Um, you know, I just I it's mean, not. The, it's not for me. Yeah. I, I would never. I would never. It's not. It's 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 because like its greatest strength is that it can be streamable to you know anything that you have pretty much. Um, That's your the TV, strength. I agree. Your yeah. phone, your yeah. you know, your browser, and I think like once the browser, I, I think that's the biggest one. Once the browser gets legit then it's something that can be mentioned. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's yeah. what most people would enjoy playing it from. It's from here's, their browser. Here, here's the thing. Here's what I would use Stadia for. If for games, not like Yes 2, for games um, that are way more simple, stuff like Danganronpa, you know, like visual novels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or older RPGs, like, you know, like a Chrono Trigger or FF6, just like easier games to, to run. Mm -hmm. And they're playable without noticeable lag on a tablet so i can bring my ipad on the train and be like oh i'm gonna fire up some ff6 play that on my way to work and that's that's when i would probably buy into it yeah i think that's the that's a good that's a good strategy hopefully that they'll try to do instead of continually getting bigger games just also try to remember that you know some of the smaller games are easier to run games that's something people want to play too um yeah just more casual like they should have a, a range of games uh, which they kind of do, but you know, just yeah, continuing to yeah. diverse for the library. There's only 22 titles available, I believe now. So there's yeah, a not, lot. not a lot, right? That's like Virtual Boy scale. That's you know, that's, that's not that's not like, too oh, many. Uh, PSP launch titles right there. Like, huh? We got yeah. 22, but yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes in the future. And uh, I don't know. You have any if, any any other news? Do you have anything else? Not really, just, um, you know, it's the end of the year here in the world, so been kind of busy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is, kind of yeah. busy wrapping up uh, a lot of stuff here. Uh, it's kind of tax season in Japan, so a lot of a lot of forms are being signed and stuff. Luckily, I'm actually not, I'm not married and I have no dependents of any kind. Mm -hmm. Oh so yeah, so it's my, like sign your name. Yeah, my, my forms are so easy, it's just sign your name. That being said, I actually messed up one of my forms at the... <laughs> So I had to, I had, had to sign your name. It. It's like sign your yeah. name, stamp. That's it. Sign stamp. Yeah. So, um, well, what's interesting is actually I don't have a hunkle. I don't have a stamp. Wait, how do you not have? Yeah, good question. So a lot of so if you guys don't know, if you guys aren't sure, in Japan there's a thing called a hunkle, which is kind of like an official stamp. It takes the place of a signature. You can use that to open bank accounts, uh, sign for packages, any kind of official document. Like when you quit a job, you kind of usually have to hunkle it. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a honko, so I've been living here for seven years, and I've only been signing stuff. I don't whenever, know how you. Could... Yeah. So whenever people are like, "Oh, we need your honko," and I'll, I'll always be like, "Oh, sorry, I'm a filthy foreigner. I don't have a honko," and they're like, "Oh, just sign it, just sign it, just sign it." So, what? Yeah. Wait, so so I've been... what's? I was gonna say what's crazy is that I have a honko, and I I have two honkos actually. Uh, one from when I studied abroad, which is the one I still use, but I got a newer one. Uh, when I, you know, came back to Japan to start working. And I tried to honko a bank form with the new one. And it wouldn't let you. They have some like honko scanner. Some just like, yo, this is not the same 
Yeah. You know, what, mm. it, but it's in katakana. Like, how do you know it's not the same? Like, what? There's like, there's like little notches into them. So they'll cut like a tiny notch into the honko. So it, it can't be replicated. Well, it can be replicated, but it's not perceivable. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't. I was just wondering what type of scan oh. technology. Like, who, no, yeah. <laughs> who does this? Yeah. But that's good because they're just stamps, you know? So. Yeah. So Stamp protection. I have this, I just want to talk too much, but I had this conversation with some Japanese people where I was like, oh, we sign everything, you know, back home, everything is signature. And then they're like, oh, but you can just copy a signature. And I'm like, not really, because only you personally know how you sign your own signature. Yeah. And even if you like kind of replicate it at the best you can, the speed of your stroke will affect how it kind of comes out. How it comes out. So I'm just like, well using that logic could i not just steal your honko like like legit easy, just, yeah, yeah just take it to swipe could, it just like i could take your honko and stamp whatever i wanted for you to steal my signature you have to like practice it you have to you be have me to, yeah you, you have to like look at me. yeah it's like a face-off thing like no you have to like look at my signature and like you know practice and practice it over and over again so um no but oh. i don't have a honko so i sign everything and then i actually messed up one of my forms i just didn't sign it for some reason I just I just forgot to sign it. This is, and, this is so and then, strange. Yeah, this and then is, this is a like, shock for me. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, you have to come and sign it." And I'm like, "What? What do you mean?" I'm like, "I can't believe I messed it up." So I have the easiest forms. I'm not married, no kids, uh, no dependents of any kind, and I still messed up my form. That's, That's kind you know, of sad. Yeah, just you know, things to aim for for next year. Yeah, Goals. don't uh, don't <laughs> don't forget to sign your form. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. So yeah, it's the end of the year. Um, it's tax season in Japan, so uh, a lot of paperwork and stuff, and it's just busy at work and stuff. Um, at this time of year, so yeah, it's 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 just like this time of year. It's busy. I think around the world. I know here in America, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving slash Black Friday slash Cyber Monday slash getting into Christmas atmosphere. Yeah, it's pretty crazy for for you Americans. Um, I'm about Thanksgiving, eat. Thanksgiving in Canada is a month prior, so there's no thanksgiving to worry about huh see this yeah. is we're global we're global but we do do we do do black friday um with like i think like 10 years ago we started doing it because i think um well people in canada were just like why do americans get these good deals i want to go shopping too so we're like all right fine we'll do black friday which is done by the way because we have boxing day and mm. americans americans don't, don't do, do boxing. boxing day we don't box so it's like well, now we have two Black Fridays, which is great for consumers, not so great for businesses. It's double hell. Well, I, I um, have noticed there has been a trend actually this year, um, and I know this is when looking for some Black Friday deals, is that there are, you know, there's the deals before Black Friday, right? Yeah. Um, but this year they've taken it to the next level of, and I, I saw this when I was looking for a Pixel 3a. It was like, Pixel 3a will be on sale November 17th through November like 21st. Then it will go off sale. And then it will go back on sale on November 28th on Black Friday. I'm like, what? what? Well, the what? Why? What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. And the best, no, the best part is that the price points are different for each one. It's like, oh, no. the lower one is going to be on Black Friday. But we got a slightly, you know, good deal, you know, a pretty decent deal for this uh, November 17th bundle if you want this. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's, it's just, uh, for people who can't wait like oh my pixel 3 broke i need a new one and there's like emergency purchase i don't know and it, it's for all of us that don't want to just camp yeah. outside or something so anyways. yeah I've, anyways yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's, it. that's life we're, that's that's life we're like i said we're gonna keep this one short because next week we're coming back with an extra long one i don't know are maybe we, are we oh maybe I, I don't know we'll see yeah Depends all on right. the news. <laughs> sure sounds good Sounds good. Uh, so remember, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at UGP underscore cast. We love to hear from you guys. So we're posting a lot of news stories and uh, we're trying to highlight some streamers. So if you're streaming and if you're listening, definitely follow us. We'll try to give a shout out to you, especially if you're playing Apex because we love you Apex peoples. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, you can also listen to us on anchor.fm or iTunes or Google Play, you know, any anchor, Spotify, whatever, any major podcasting service out there. We're on it. 
And please leave us a voice message. You know, we'd love to hear from you. Actually, we do have a voice message. I don't know, Alex, if you want me to play this voice message because it is you. <laughs> wait, is it? I didn't. I didn't make wait, a voice it, message. Wait, is it not you? It, oh my I, I, I did. I didn't make a voice message for us. Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. Uh, okay. Well, uh, from the <laughs> from the uh, how do I patch this into the end? Of, okay, I'm going to patch this into the end of the show. Uh, okay. So the Rewa podcast gave us a shout out. We'll play that message. Thank you guys uh, over right, there cool. at the Rayworth Podcast. You guys are awesome as well. If you haven't listened to their podcast, go listen to it. It's bi-weekly. I think they should have an episode coming up. Uh, in a they had bit. one on, on Monday, um, so the next one will be in a week. Yeah, so definitely follow those guys and uh, listen to the podcast. They're super awesome. Thanks again, Alex, for being Alex, for being you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. You too. I appreciate it. Throw some like bro- brotherly love right there. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're going to head out and we'll see you all n- the next week for episode yep. 12. Yeah. There we go. All That'd right. Be good. Be good. And remember, you set the tone. Enjoy games and enjoy life. Peace.